Okay, so I am on Miyajima, which is an island uh, about 20 minutes away from Hiroshima by train. And it's known for the giant tori behind me and the deer that roam around. But it's a beautiful island, it's kept in, uh, like the architecture is all Edo period. So um, it's like before modern Japan. They uh, keep it that way for the tourists, I'm assuming. Um, but it's really nice. And this area that I'm actually walking in uh, is not here during high tide. It's all underwater. So there's a lot of water that I have to watch where I'm stepping. Otherwise, I'll get my feet soaked, which I already did get them a bit wet. Um, but it's really, really cool. Um, I'd love to be here during high tide just to see what it's like. Because all this area, you can kind of see um, like how wet it is. And along the rocks, you can see how high the water goes. And now I'm gonna explore the island since I already explored the giant dory. All right, so you see all these shells all over the ground? Oh, you can see some of them are moving. I didn't think there was gonna be anything in them, but if you can see, there is a little guy inside there, and he's like coming out. On this island, there are deer everywhere, um, and they call them residential deer. So they'll, they'll just come up to you and they'll try and be friendly because they want food, but you're not supposed to feed them because they don't want them here, they want them to go back to the wild. You can see they're all over the place and they have no fear of humans. I'm here outside of a temple that I stumbled upon and I absolutely love to find these because they burn incense and just smell so good. And the buildings are gorgeous, um, they have all this ornamentation on the inside and it's just a beautiful area. This is one of the streets where you can really see how everything is kept traditional. Um, you don't really see modern architecture, it's uh, just the traditional architecture with modern fixtures. So uh, you have the vending machines, you know, there's air, air conditioning, they have um, the same sorts of windows, uh, but everything else is uh, traditional, uh, just with modern comforts. And it, it makes for a really pretty little town. I think the population of this island is uh, 2,000, and the rest of it is just tourists and shops. So I think I came at the perfect time, because uh, there's really cool weather. Um, it's perfect out, not too hot, not too cold. And there are sakura blooming, so there are flowers everywhere. Um, everything's really lush, but there aren't too many bugs yet. So this, these little walks through the nature are really, really enjoyable. Here there's a temple and it's burning incense, which smells amazing. And around it are all these little statues of children. And I believe that they are to protect um, children, living and dead. So here's what the temple looks like from a bit further away. I'm not going to film inside of it because I think that's disrespectful. Uh, lots of places will say no photo because um, they don't want you doing that. It's these old wood, it's very old, and the grounds are quite expansive. They've got a few buildings comprising the grounds and uh, monks are out and about. Lots of uh, just in intricate landscaping and decoration, I assume through years of work. So through that doorway, there are approximately, well there are over a hundred statues similar to this. Um, I couldn't take video because it's quite dark. And there was a woman going through and she would offer a few coins and then a prayer to each one. So that's a 
That's daunting. But that was cool to see. And they had incense burning in there, of course. This means entrance. I don't think you can see in there. Alrighty, so let's do a 90 minute hike to the mountaintop. Here it sucks, because there's lots of steps. Let's do this. So I know maybe like seven people at my hostel, and I just ran into one of them. He just got back from climbing up uh, the mountain. So yeah, he came back down, and now he's heading out, and I'm going up. He says the view's amazing, so I'm really excited for that. Just the ascent is pretty sucky, because a lot of stone steps. It certainly is pretty up here. I'm not even that far up, but I'm already winded. There was a sign back there that said, Caution for Venomous Snakes. So, that's a great sign. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, this is, uh, doesn't make me nervous at all. Before, there were quite a few people walking down that I'd meet, but now there hasn't been anyone in a while, not since the last rest stop. So, I'm actually a little bit worried, like, if I were bitten by a viper, <laughs> this could not be good. But, yeah, it's a good hike. I feel like this is getting me into shape, so that's good. I think I'm doing better than I would have a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I'm not sure of the name of these piles of rocks, but they're basically like a form of praying. So maybe they're called prayer piles. I don't know. But you can see them all over the place. It's kind of cool. There's construction over there. And then we go over this way. Still construction, but they're not working over here right now. We go down into the valley area, then up. I wonder if we can cross this when it has just rained, or rained heavily. I am so glad there are no mosquitoes yet. Because I can imagine I'd be eaten alive right now. Since I'm, there's no sunlight, I'm in the middle of the forest. So, thank goodness it's not mosquito season. I'm glad I got some more water. Because I've almost drank it all. And if I didn't have as much as I did, that also would have been bad. But I was not planning to hike this at all because I didn't know this existed. But if I see a hike, I have to do it. So, that's what brought me here. Made it to the top. What a view. I'm so glad this hike exists. <laughs>